Okay, so let's, let's take a look at a couple of games of Aman Simutawe and Daim Shabazz is an author who wrote a really good article about him. He has one on chess base, and this is the more in-depth version on his website, Chess Trump. So I'll put that in the description. All right, and let's take a look at a couple of his games. But uh, yeah, just to give you know a quick overview. So he's from Zambia, and he is officially the first grandmaster from sub-Saharan Africa. So he, he studied at UT Dallas, and then it was 07. He became a GM in 07 after, you know, after taking a, a bit of a break, and he came back in 07, and he got his title. So this is a really amazing game. We'll take a look at that one. And this is, as we said, Andrew, where he is getting his title. All right. So you can check that out. I'll post that link and let's open up this game. So the first one is against Nakamura and then Colin Crouch. There's the Nakamura one. It's pretty cool. I mean, he's able to essentially crush Nakamura, but really just to take a look at how uncompromising he is. Just focus on how uncompromising his play is and how he's just fearless. You know, see where he grabs this pawn. But to beat a guy like Nakamura, you have to be, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you can't just hope. You can't just be solid and hope he's going to make a mistake. He's going to overrun you, right? Yeah. Now watch how he does this. Well, Nakamura, of course, plays aggressively with the Dutch. Men of three. Men of six. C4. So a common way to handle the Dutch. D6. Beyond Kettling. And often you will play D5. That's what he does here. You often feel on Keto. It looks kind of weird, but you want to grab the light squares, though, because you see technically there's a weakness on E6, right? Since the D pawn and F pawn have moved. Bishop G2, Bishop G7, Castle Castle, Knight C3. So just very common sense way of playing. Just remember the Fionn Keto Bishop is common. Knight C6. Well, keep in mind, you know, for example, if we don't do that, then you might have to worry about H2 more. So it's just, you know, it kind of supports your king side a little bit. And it also, again, it puts pressure on light squares. So sometimes they will play c6 as black. And often the queen will go to e8, maybe get e5 in. Maybe the queen will eventually swing if g5, g4 or something is played. So black will clearly, you know, go for off the king side attack or the central attack. But white is also going to play in the center, sometimes the queen side too. I think you'll see him do both here. Um, but certainly white can eventually try to get e4 in if possible. Um, play on the E file, but you're going to see D5. So you're going to grab the light squares and try to hit some weak points like Knight E6 later or something like that. It's very common. So he goes D5, tempo. And yeah, this is uh, this is pretty common, I think. We can open, I'm pretty sure I'm not an expert in this line or something, but I'm pretty sure this is uh, a common line. Yeah. The Knight goes to E5 and you just hit him back with E4 right away. Take, take. E. Apparently, Queen B3 is very strong too. These are both popular, but um, yeah, I guess in practice, queen b3 is done better. But yeah, this is what I, when I was looking at, I'm like, oh yeah, e4 looks, I thought that's the one that I've seen because uh, it's just, it's blockading the e pawn. So it's fixing it in place. And then Nakamura will have to worry about some pressure, you know, maybe opening up. So he did that by bypassing. And this is where he's fearless, right? Well, it's, it's a little tricky. It's, so it turns out that he's not, it looks like he's not even winning a pawn by taking it. So that's what I'm saying. He's just fearless. Oh, th this is a line though. This is even a line here. So F4 is the most common move. It doesn't score. So it's equal score from this position. Knight D7 actually scored twice for not a big sample, but so F4, takes, takes, and Bishop takes. And there's that fearlessness. Mm -hmm. I mean, so even e5 is a move but this is i don't know he, they probably knew the theory because i didn't realize that this has been played so many times but it's certainly fearless against nakamura to just be like i'm going to take this pawn and look into a discovery <laughs> what's that discovery yeah yeah looks a little scary but then again i mean you can always tuck your bishop back yep he goes queen c1 but you can imagine uh well, bishop g3, I don't know, because your pawn's going to be a bit fragmented, right? You've given up your g-pawn. So it's just bold because you know Black's trying to attack your king side. And you're like, here, take my g-pawn. Effectively, you're trading a g-pawn. Well, it's for the d-pawn, actually. Look at look at the journey of the f-pawn, right? It became an f-pawn, but it was a d-pawn, became a d-pawn, became an f-pawn. 
right? And then he just effectively lost his, so it's effectively trading from earlier, trading a G pawn for a D pawn. But those double pawns, they've been undoubled. So it doesn't seem that logical at first, but keep in mind, there is E5. He does, he does get a lot of squares, you know, he's putting a lot of pressure and actually will block his scoring better though. Oh, there's his game, see? It's showing up as number two. And actually, uh, well, a 20, so this is a lower rated player beating a high rated player, but then there was a 2759, you beating Shu, 2759 versus 2581 back in, more recently in 2018. Interesting. So it kind of depends on the ratings because you see black one, but black was 2587 versus 2346. Oh, I remember I used to see Bragamov a lot. Yeah, he was active in the early 2000s. I used to see him play some pretty cool stuff. Bragamov was very strong. Always see him dominating the world open and stuff on one of the top boards. So uh, yeah, it's pretty, but regardless of whether it's been played a lot, I think it's still a bold choice. You don't have to play like this. Again, queen b3 is natural, but, but then again, it's less decisive. This is very, you know, it's it's more of a critical line. You're like, I'm going to hit you straight in the center and try to prove that black does have weaknesses. But the interesting thing is that, yeah, black has weaknesses, but certainly when you go G takes F4, you're taking on weaknesses too on your king side. But you're very strong in the center. And look at the development too. It's much better for white, right? Well, the bishop's out, but white has free movement for his pieces. He has freedom of movement, right? Black's a little more cramped, right? It's like, where's the bishop go? Maybe here, it might get kicked by f3 even. Um, but no, he's, he's going to go for this to get his pawn back. So it's not like he's just grabbing a pawn. He's grabbing uh, some squares, but he's willing to trade down. Let's see how this turns out. e5 hits the bishop. Bishop goes back. And now the only game we have in this database is, uh, is their game. So it diverged after some people took on c3, which is actually pretty natural. And then what do we have? It's six for six, right? Six for six. But you can still see, you know, white has a lot of pressure in the center. Well, I mean, you just got to be like, you got to be a little cautious. But how does black actually exploit this? It'll take a while. And meanwhile, white's going to have a ton of central play, you know. So it's this very sharp position, though. And e, so he has ideas on the diagonal, ideas on against e7, e file. So it's interesting. Very double-edged position. Okay, so queen c1. Nakamura, of course, is very aggressive. Hits back with e5, and he simply brings the bishop in the middle. Now we have an isolated e-pawn, right? And the and the knight's hanging currently. Knight retreats. Bishop g5, just super aggressive, going after the queen. And again, he has a little bit of lead in development, because it's not really clear where the queen goes. The bishop's stuck on c8. Knight to b5. Interesting. See how assertive he is. Yeah. He's not just sitting around. He's not going like, you know, natural move. I don't know, queen. Well, the B, the, the knight wants to take C4. So this way he is covering his pawn on C4 simultaneously threatening a fork on C7. So it's kind of tricky. How do you handle that? He just trades the knight's hops, you'll see. Um, but I mean, okay, what's a passive move you can make? I don't know, B3. That's a timid move, right? He's not going to do that. He, he realizes though, he's ahead in development. Black, they both have weaknesses. Again, white's weaknesses are mainly comprised, you know, on the king side. Blacks are more in the center. So he's got to hit him hard in the center while he has a chance. Knight b5, rook f7. I'll, I'll move away from this. Now we don't need this. Database. Okay. So c takes. So it's looking a bit like a Benoni now. You know, like in the Benoni where you have pawn on d6 and there's maybe been a trade and then maybe black gets e5 and yeah, because there often to be a pawn on e7 that maybe moves to e5. So it's kind of this sort of structure um, with, a, with a black is still a little bit cramped and the bishop is not good at the moment on g7, hopes to push it, but you can, it's a little tricky though to get e4 in in this position. You probably, you probably lose the e-pawn. So c5, but again, super aggressive, breaking through, takes, queen takes, and now he's fully mobilized. So I like it. Again, you can see any structural weakness on the king side, total, pretty much total compensation for that. And he has a huge initiative in the center, right? He'll keep building it, of course. Hey, queen goes back. Ominously looking at the king, x ray And then he shifts the bishop to h3. He says, well, you want to abandon the diagonal? Mm -hmm. I'm going to come to e6. And by the way, it's defensive because you stop rook c8, right? Restrictive. Well, defending against the rook attacking your queen, but also just aggressive in that it's restricting him, pretty much threatening. I mean, you have to be careful about giving up your light squared bishop because you're king. 
if he ever gets this pawn, you know, you got to watch out for your diagonal. But he's just going to come in. He could just sit there. He doesn't have to take the rook yet. He comes in. See, rook goes to five. He doesn't take the rook. That's interesting. A lot of people would just grab the rook, but it's very risky. Probably very, very bad. Why do you think you shouldn't take the rook? Yeah, you have to understand that. Because um, um, it takes a rook. Um, well, I mean, that bishop is a monster where he is. He's really happy. Oh, uh, which bishop? Oh, yes. Yeah. See, there's like, first of all is, hey, if I trade, I give up my real strong bishop. So that's the that's giving up your attacking chances to a large degree. You're killing your own initiative. And then you're passing the initiative on to black. Well, yeah. structurally in other ways. Okay, so you're one, you're giving up a really good piece. And two, you're giving him the uncontested bishop, which attacks the deep pawn, which used to be guarded by the bishop. So you're giving black prospects there. What other, pros what other prospects are you giving black? That it's got a great cheap pawn. The cheap pawn's gonna, like those two together can like walk on down and attack. Mm -hmm. Exactly, so that's why a lot of times at a King's Indian, where, you know, black will get like uh, similar to the King's Indian in the sense when you go E5 and F5 and the pawn takes on F5, a lot of times the G pawn will take, apparently opening the black king and moves out of the way and you have the G file as well. But you want those pawns to work in unison. So it's not good to have the, just the isolated pawn on E5, right? Generally speaking. But if he gets that second pawn working side by side, that's just strong, right? Yeah. And now you have queen G6 coming. Yep. and I mean, this pawn, I think he's going to hold the pawn. But remember, I also mentioned about the bishop coming out. Well, the bishop could come out, you know, oops, this one. So there's just a lot of pressure. Rook, yeah, maybe queen g6, rook g8. Now he doesn't have to worry about anything on the light squares because the bishop's absent. And who knows, he might even reroute the bishop. But I, I kind of like that pressure, d5. You can't go rook d8, really. I mean, you could play queen f7 or something like that. If you want, but but in the meantime, just kind of put some pressure on the G file. You're threatening to win the bishop here. So, but if the king moves, now that's really becoming lethal here, right? So, what do you do though? You got to get. You don't want to be on the diagonal. You don't want to be on the G file. And, and then with the queen moves, the rook comes out. Yeah, it's just terrible. So it might be. Let's see. I think the computer might say that White is losing. Looks what, like a dream losing? for Hikaru. Not, yeah, Hikaru it's a dream for what? Yeah, it looks Three. like a dream for Hikaru. He would love that. Yeah, yeah, definitely a great attacking position. Let's see what it says. Unless you have some miraculous defense, I'm going to guess Black's ahead. Wow, it's saying that it's not that bad, though. But again, huh. that's what, like, perfect defense. Well, I guess Queen C7 could throw him off a bit. But in, in general, if it says it's even, that means that Black has full compensation for the, what do we have, one, two, three, four, five, equal pawns. If it's saying it's even, that means that Black has full compensation for the exchange. And that means that White has to tread so carefully. So any missed, and that, and that even doesn't look like a human move because most humans would take the deep on and be like, I don't, well, I don't, at least the white doesn't want to do that, right? I'm not sure the justification, we have to look into that. But actually it looks like it's saying 0, 0.0 because there's a draw line. There's some checks, I don't know. But at any rate, I would feel very uncomfortable about giving up the deep on, even thinking about that. So anyway, um, there's the computer says full compensation or a draw and draw a line i say i do not like this position for white mm -hmm. at all so that's why he didn't do it he doesn't feel comfortable either going into it but as it turned out he plays queen h4 he makes the right choice uh well it was fluctuating you know it was oscillating but pretty much plus one nope it realizes it's even stronger so i'll take off the computer but it's preferring uh more than a point up for white the strength of queen h4 so this is what you know this is ultimately what leads to the collapse of Black's position here. It's just, he's coming in on the light squares, looking at the dark squares. Now he might take the rook under favorable circumstances. So they still have to keep a lookout for that. So does he move? No, he still he still leaves the rook hanging on, well, the exchange hanging. Now he wants the D pawn. Kicks the queen out of the way. So understandable, I like that move. It's understandable that he's like, go ahead and take my B pawn because I care much more about my D pawn, huh. right? Yeah. Nice move. So he's just, you know, it's all about the initiative here. So taking on F5, if nothing else, it just kills his initiative. It makes it uncomfortable. Well, it's like kills the initiative, tempor like temporarily black has pressure, but it's more like long-term with the improved, you know, pawns coming together, the G file, the diagonal, the bishop pair, you know, but it's, but it's just like he wants to keep the initiative in the short term as well. So just playing a move like A4, 
but also that will be enduring for black too, just enduring pressure on the diagonal. So he keeps that, he keeps that, you know, holds on to that d5 pawn, doesn't let him break through. Now he's going for rook c7, which will be great for his uh, attack. Now he, this time, this time he's actually hanging the d pawn. Well, just like the example of queen c7. So in some cases you do want to hang the d-pawn. Now, why here? Why here? What's the follow through? Wait, this is the last, this is, did I copy the whole thing? No, I mustn't, wait, hold on a second. I'm gonna pause it for a second because that's, that doesn't make sense to me. I, cause I know, I'm pretty sure the game went on. There was some other stuff that happened on the king's side. Yeah, he wouldn't have taken the pawn and resigned. Okay, hold on a second. Unless you realized how horrible it was. I'm going to pull up this game. So as for the, so we see there's, yeah, there's several, I'll, I'll just keep sharing it on here. So we saw it in the chess base article. Yeah, I'll post both of those on the YouTube, okay, on the YouTube uh, video, on the description. So we have all these games that were featured by uh, Shabazz in the chess base article. So I like this. And then, yeah, you have the games on the left. Um, so we have the Hikaru game. No, I must have cut it off somewhere. Because what was the? Oh, don't look at it. I'm gonna, wait. Don't look at it. Hold on. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm pause. I want you. Guys to guess. Away. Wait. So where was it? No, there are only a few more moves though. I, I don't know why I cut off though. Okay, because there are only like five more moves. But his attack is breaking through. So somehow, okay, I'm gonna go back here. I'm going down to. That's fine. And I'm just going to go down to uh, FPGN. Now I'll just import it again. Somehow it got cut off. Let's see. Yeah, now I added a few moves. Okay, import. I don't know what happened. Okay, so we could come back to where we were without showing the end. All right. So you can see though how quickly, if I just go back a few moves, look at how quickly his attack brewed up, you know, and again, it's it's just, I like his understanding that you see this understanding of it's okay to open your king a little bit. It's about the initiative. It's about peace placement. And, he's, and he understands, at least in the short term, there's no, or even in the midterm, there's no way that black is getting to white's king unless you go ahead and take on a five, which is giving into him. So as long as he doesn't do that, he has this huge initiative, right? Just a few moves later, here he is. So like six moves later, he, he's huge attack, right? But he does give up the, he has a beautiful finish. So he sees that he can give up the D pawn. Okay, what's the finish here? Black, white to play and win. Oh my word. Um... Um, I just want to take the rook. So maybe it's worth it's reconsidering. Forcing, though. It's it's not, considering. Why is that? It's not forcing though. Like, I and, and, and it still has the same problem in terms of, uh, well, it's a little different now. But yes, then again, like no, not necessarily. It's not even that different. No, actually it probably loses on the spot because I mean, it's fine. But just to consider, if you look at it like, wait a second, that block has a really, I think, Black has a super strong move. What is it? Oh, no. Um, Actually, no, he does, because he could threaten something. Oh, no. <laughs> How does Black create the threat? I, oh, well, at the moment, White doesn't have any checks that are meaningful. Yeah, I was looking. I just looked at that, and then I was thinking um, right after, like, I was thinking, of course, just pawn takes, and then Bishop, you know, if he cooperates and you play Bishop F6. Or, or, you, or you, even sack, uh, you even sack on G7. There are prospects for that. With, oh, okay. we, but we need, but in order to do something like that, or Bishop, or yeah, yeah, Bishop F6 threatening Bishop X G7 and mate coming probably pretty soon. But with the queen and the queen coming into the party around there on G7. Oh, man, queen F3. F6 and all that. But there's queen F3. Yeah, okay. probably instant, probably instantly over. Yeah. Yeah, that's no good. Nope. That's yeah, yeah that's, just take that's it. Bad. There's, there's no way to, there's no way to cover, no way to cover there. So yeah. that's important to to look at. But again, he just doesn't care about the rook on f5 because these okay. bishops are so strong. But now your bishop's hanging, so like, what do you do? Okay. Um. Hmm. 
So this is a calm. Now he has a beautiful combo. Over. No. Queen sack. It's beautiful. It's usually a queen sack. <laughs> so yeah, this is a different. Sack. This is a different sack. Maybe not. Okay. Yeah, because I don't see anything. Right. All right. All right. I mean, if you had a if you had a rook swing, like if you had a follow through of like rook on you know rook on c four to h four, that would pretty much be mate. Because you have a bit, yeah, bishop h6, rook takes h6 would be made if you had a rook swing to replace the queen. Because the bishop covers and all that good stuff. No, the bishop would be even stuck because it would be pinned because the king would be, yeah. So you almost have some mating ideas here. Well, you do, obviously, but not, unfortunately, just we don't get to sack our queen yet. But but there's another <laughs> another thing you could do. But you just have to storm in there somehow, just a matter of which move order. Okay, with like the idea that we can't have queen, we can't have queen f3. So, yeah, so it has to be forced. It has to be, it doesn't have to be a check, but it has to be forcing enough to get his attention on the next move. I'm thinking maybe um, if he moves his, what is it, AB, his bishop to A6. Uh, H6 to threaten the bishop? H6, yeah. That's plausible because you are threatening mate, actually. Yeah. Now there that's isn't nice. so there isn't a queen f3 because that's a nice mate. That's bishop. a great mate. But he has another reply. Well, you know, I don't know. It still looks good, but he can take the bishop. Let's say he takes the bishop, take with check, king moves. At least he's sealing up his light squares. There's that getting rid of that light squared bishop. Finally, you see the consequence, whether it's defensively or offensively, with that stuff. But also, I don't think there's something here. Huh? Not quite. I mean, it still looks pretty good. Like you can have some little tricks here. Yeah. It might still be winning. No, but then, but look, I mean, what you can do that, like there's, there's, oh, yeah, there's not a mate, I think. Or is there? Maybe there is a mate. Yeah, it looks like, is there any counterplay though? Is there sufficient counterplay? No, duh, it's hanging. No, he can't get in. He can't get in. So you can't get to h7. He wants to go here. He can't move the queen in time. To hang, uh, bishop's hanging. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Actually, black's up a pawn. I mean, obviously, it's, I mean, I don't see black winning this necessarily because, yeah, it's it's a tricky position because obviously he's got to be very careful here. But he can probably tuck his rook back, his bishop back, and try to like go queen d4 or something like that. But it's a very messy position. But that's not what he wants. Huh. So where were we? We were on right here. Yeah. Yeah. Right after bishop takes d5. I mean, it's technically, I guess, the losing move, but he has such a dominant position. You know, this is very, very strong. The pressure here, the bishop able, the bishop's able to do things potentially with the checks. Um, yeah, and, and black, well, black does have a big move. So given that black, it's kind of like if you do a puzzle and it's like you're about to get mated. Then you have to you have to mate them basically, or mm -hmm. come up with some, or maybe like there are puzzles where you're like, up a piece and they're trying to mate and you have to defend. But in this case, it's just pure counter attack. Or could, well, he's trying, no, it's more like you're finishing your attack after this move. You're finishing your attack. You're killing his counter attack. The best, best defense is a good offense scenario. It's gotta be Bishop. Or, or vice versa. Is it Bishop takes Bishop? I mean, at least that way we stop it, but I just, I don't see a follow up. If he does what, sorry, Nikki? Um, if he just takes the bishop, rook takes the bishop. You are threatened. So that, that's the that's actually the only mate threat, I think. Uh, oh no, other than bishop h6. Well, that was what well, they had a remedy for that. But this one is actually a mate threat that doesn't, and it's not dependent on the bishop being on e6. Okay. So if you take if you take g7, this bishop doesn't matter anymore. You're threatening mate, so you can't touch it. So your bishops are are. He, he actually, he countersacks on G5, though, but, the, but this is how you break through on the dark squares, right? And all these, so queen F3 is too slow, right? Because there's uh, uh -huh. queen, queen H7 mate, queen H7 yeah, mate. Said, yeah. So they have to deal with the rook. Actually, what he does is he sacks here. So you have to take, of course, because the bishop's covering the corner. You have to just take it. 
Otherwise, I can imagine lines where you ignore the rook and just keep going, but yeah, you have to take. Um, and now the bishop does take. He does take, and then he's winning. But if he doesn't take, well, then the other critical line would be you have to calculate, of course, if the if the queen, uh, if the king takes g7. Let's take a look at that. The bishop takes, we'll see the win there, which is pretty straightforward. But after the so, king takes, so, so interestingly, we have we have equal material right now, but we're about we're the one attacking them now. So what do you think we should do? Rook C1. Rook C1. Oh, oh again, to... again, they have that defense of bishop takes and then bishop tucks ah. seven. There's always that no, no bishop becomes pawn scenario. Um, something more for, again, always look for your most forcing moves. Okay. I for yeah, there's two there are two checks to look for. Queen takes pawn. Queen e five, yeah. Queen takes e five. You you have whenever you have that one bishop on the light squares and a bishop or queen on the dark squares, he can come out. So it's not that it's mating, but it's very powerful because. Because what? Because you're double attacking the bishop. You're yeah, you're forking that, and then you're gonna make another fork if you don't have a mate. I don't think there's a mate, but mate will come soon enough. Check, and then you're forking those two, and he actually doesn't have any checks, so he has to lose everything except for the queen. Uh, there aren't even any checks to to set up really. No, there's one check, and then we could nice and neatly um huh. you could block no you don't even need to whenever you have a bishop on the diagonal you can actually just tuck your king over because they can't touch your king on the diagonal but if you really want to feel safe you can make your bishop a pawn there and then you can bring out your rook but uh, yeah i would play king h uh, i mean or, or uh, queen g3 is good enough but if you play king h1 just keep going and just keep attacking them and then soon enough you do like a rook lift or something like that but you do happen to be up a rook and a bishop so it doesn't really matter <laughs> you could win it however you want um yeah we just go after the king maybe trade queens okay so so this is a great move it's uh so when he plays rook c1 i mean obviously he wants to be on c7 and there's the value of that bishop on e6 again it's, like i said earlier where you stopped rook c8 attacking the queen on c4 i think it was on c4 right so mm -hmm. now it's keeping the rook out of c8 which enables uh, what's well, controlling the c file so you can see his pieces have far more value Queen's aiming in here, bishop's aiming in here, bishop's aiming here on g8, seven, rook's on the c file. Rook f1's guarding on it, guarding f2, it can always come out later. But other than that, black's pieces aren't doing much at the moment, especially not the rook on a8. Bishop on g7 is purely defensive. So you see all your pieces pretty much have more value, carry more weight than your opponents. So he does, uh, yeah, he's going for uh, to take and go queen f3 comes in and then rook takes g7 and he resigns no he resigns now so the idea is that if the bishop takes no rather the first thing we looked at was king takes queen takes check and everything falls now if the bishop takes well we have equal number equal attackers they actually have what two extra pawns but that doesn't matter how do we win this position this is where he resigned after this move but the cleanest way to reach the black king queen h6 it's actually interesting because i was looking at queen h6 for a second but it's interesting because you have to realize uh -huh. what the defense is to that is there a defense to that i is thought it, it was a cheeky, but... cheeky little move oh no he has a cheeky move uh i think it, i think it holds for now Oh no, queen h3, come on now. Oh, I was looking at, yeah, there's that. I was actually looking at this little uh, bishop retreat. Oh, that too, It yeah. looks very awkward, but I don't see a mate. Like you can do this, but now that, I mean, it's pretty bad, but it's not mate. God, <laughs> I thought there was no defense to queen h6, like for sure. Like I was like, that is, that is 100%. He can't But you're stop. right, you're right. This is actually more direct, especially because, uh, 
No, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. And then there's this. Then Rook takes. Yeah, yeah. That's worse. That's worse. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Oh, yeah, you're, and you're then right. at the very no, it's probably getting mated, right? That's got to be mating. Yeah. It has to. Yeah. Yeah, that's got. Oh, yeah. Duh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was looking for the Rook on the corner. Right, right. Um, so yeah, that does the trick. I mean, we're hitting them on dark squares. Well, I was focused on light squares. Now suddenly we're on dark squares, where you because the rook is replacing, uh, replaced by the queen. So anyway, um, queen, queen, queen f six, because that's the that's the other way in. Um, but funny enough, yeah, that does hold. You know, it's not <laughs> ideal, but it does hold. Yeah, that's the only move actually, given that because you have to guard h seven. I mean, all white has is this. I mean, okay, so he's up in exchange. Yeah, he can do this or something. He's up in exchange for a pawn. So it's not done yet. You want this to be done, right? Yeah. Like he can trade queens and it's like, it's not a game, it's not game over yet. Okay. So it's he does queen like, like how, how strong is this? What's that? It's, oh, I'm sorry. I was just gonna say, it's too bad you can't like slide your king to each one to bring your other rook in, but there's like two made, your king's like right on that diagonal. Yep, and there and there we go again with the G takes F four move. So it was yeah. a risk, but ultimately it, it just comes down to him needing to be a little careful, like tucking his bishop back or having the bishop on the same diagonal. But now that that you know he had to give that up for other things, and now you just just don't move your king and you're fine. Yeah, there was the rook check. Fortunately, the queen was able to take, mm -hmm. but that that checks either. So it does come up. Like the fact that the king's open, it does come up in terms of counters. Like the fact that there's this move, the fact that there's queen F three. So certainly White has to be careful. It's a super sharp position. And that's the thing. He he beats Nakamura at his own game. Yeah. Which is super sharp tactics. Pretty cool. Okay. So the queen is me. So how is this? Yeah. Queen F6. And well, he resigns. But why does he? I mean, he's on the diagonal with uh, the king. How would, what kind of reply? To, I mean, what, what attempt does he even have now? Well, what is the, what is the threat? And you know, obviously there's a lot of nasty discoveries. Yeah, here. there's like discoveries all over the place. And yeah, like rook a seven. You can just win the, yeah, you can just win the rook with pretty much with mate, because you would take a eight, this king will be stuck, and you'd be up a rook and an exchange. <laughs> so yeah, there's just no way to meet this diagonal. Um, okay, let's say, I mean, this now this time the rook g8 fails, because we can go there. And now we have our queen g7 made again. Or if you really, now if we want to get cheeky about it, we can force the <laughs> bishop back again, except this time we made them. But yeah, I'll just take mate in one. That's kind of funny though, because that time it smothers him more. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's a big threat here of, I guess the biggest would be just take and take the rook. So does the rook even have anywhere? I mean, obviously it's terrible, but just to play devil's advocate here, what about here? I mean, you can move, you could take the bishop if you, if you feel like it. Um, or you could take the g-pawn if you feel like it. <laughs> or just like discovered and g7, right? Like a, any discovered check. Well, yeah, you actually don't even need to. Again, I'm, I'm blind right now because you don't even need to do these long range things. Yeah, you could just go to g. You just replace the, the queen with the rook in any case, no matter what. I'm just like being I'm blind for a second. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to win a piece in mate, but obviously we don't need to be fancy about this. We can just... So anything that happens, you could just, you would shield your queen. You can mate in two. So that's it. Yeah, that's really it. He's going to check. And, and there's no way to, to hit the queen with like, with like queen challenging the queen, nothing. So it's going to be at mate and you can do queen g3 spike check and <laughs> mate, mate in two or something. So that's pretty cool. I mean, to beat Nakamura at his own game because yeah, he, like he, he creates this bold. ultra sharp position. Sorry? He's just as bold, like take my pawn, it's all good. I'm just gonna play sharp, crazy, scary line. Yeah, and this actually this is a, I didn't realize I thought this was just a choice he made, but this maybe he knew the line because this is actually it's been played quite a few, it's been played several dozen times. Um and then you know he's just activated. I really I think uh this move on corks a lot here. Knight to be five. This is a nice move. So if the knight takes Nakamura, there's a lot of things where Nakamura just didn't want to do it. He's like, no, I'm uncomfortable with that. I don't mm -hmm. want to take knight. Take, take, C7's hanging. Like he probably could have. He played rook. Let me see what's the best move here. What does it say? I'm guessing he should probably take or not. Yeah, it's saying knight takes or rook upset. It says takes and he's okay, but like Nakamura doesn't want that. He wants to create, like he wants to keep it sharp. So it's like, a, it's like sort of like a Benoni structure that he might be familiar with. 
which he's done. But then he hits him immediately, which is, that's thematic though. That's thematic for white to do to break through. And then pretty quickly, once the bishop gets in, it's interesting, he's attacking through the center. But once you play queen h4, and you, you just resist the temptation to take the exchange, because it would hurt you. And then he plays another great move, a lot of really strong moves here. You're not gonna beat Nakamura, it's like that, right? You gotta hit him pretty hard, a cascade of tactics. So over here, it makes a lot of sense though. You lure the queen away, buys you time before bishop takes d5 happens. See, look, she doesn't get, he buys him one move. Yep. Well, he gets a free rook c1 in. Same position, but it's, well, let's see, whose move is it? It's white's move now, the bishop wants to take d5. It's white's move again, but the rook's ready, the rook's on c7 this time. So way better now. And then he's able to do this because, well, it's still tricky though. Black has a lot of defenders, you know, but they're just not able to get to the right place. And this is white's like black is still not fully developed. So the rook becomes a target on a8 rather if anything. But uh yeah, now the king is the main target, and there's just no way. What else is there? He takes here. I don't know what else he could have done. Yeah, I love that sacrifice. Uh I totally missed the rook takes um g7. I mean, that's just immediate. Oh, the only other thing to look at would be uh obviously king takes. I've looked at this for a minute. Like, Let's double check what's the win there. Uh, queen h6? Queen h6, king h8. Okay. So it's actually a little tricky. I looked at this briefly. I'm like, well, what is the mate now? Huh. And the bishop is hanging now. And the queen f3 threat, threat is still there. So there's got to be oh. some. <laughs> so you'd have to see everything to make sure it works. How about, well, there's the bishop h6 line. Oh, bishop h6. Well, maybe that, the thing about this move is there's no follow-up. Do you guys see there might be a follow-up to this? Yeah. What's the follow-up for right now? Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Um, anybody else? You see it, Nikki? I think so, but I'm afraid now because I've been wrong like 800 times today. No, no, I was missing some basic stuff too. No, it's, no this is so sharp though. It's easy to look for something else. I'm like, oh, duh, there's a mate. But in this case, it's, I think it's, I hope to God it's, I think it's just a threatened mate. Because again, there's well again, I think I think I think black is gonna have to do the rook check on g5 again. And then he's probably just gonna be down as the queen of seven. Line. Queen where? That's, that's e seven. Saying. Yeah, I think you just took queen e seven, and you're threatening mate with the bishop or the queen. So they can't take the bishop. All there is is the check. But actually, now you could even take with the queen. You don't have to take with the bishop, either one, because you're threatening to come back and mate. So like they can't do anything. Even here, that's a that's mate after queen blocks. That's pretty nice. That's nice. So yeah, there's the your attack. Yeah, queen f3 is way too slow now. So yeah, I mean this wins probably as well. You can play bishop f6 or something. Yeah, bishop f6 and then mate. So that kind of yeah, you could simply uh, take with the queen and return. So that's why yeah, so he's he's just dominating the dark squares. So yeah, that's what happened here. And then he, but I love it how he's able to finally hang this pawn just in time and then yeah it's pretty cool huh so maybe if nakamura didn't take the b pawn does he have to take the b pawn like what if that saved him maybe mm. yeah well can she still the question is well she wants to put pressure on the d pawn to get rid yeah. of it, but obviously taking it didn't work but if she doesn't put pressure then the idea is the bishop just sits there on e6 with impunity mm -hmm. so what else does she do Yeah, there's no other way. No, no, maybe she should have gone. Because the thing is, well, <clears throat> yeah, was that was, rook c1, queen b3. What if she does queen b3 immediately? That's possible improvement. But no, it doesn't work either. Because there's a new way to attack. Oh, that would be beautiful. Wait, what are you saying, guys? Oh, well, Andrew just said queen b. Did you say queen b3? d3? I don't know if it just froze. Uh, third rank. I'm looking at queen. B yeah, the idea would be an attempt at improvement. This fails, though. I'm pretty sure it just fails beautifully. But after queen uh, takes b2, she goes to b3 anyway. So it's like, hey, if you're going to do it, you might as well queen b3. But there's a reason that this fails. And Andrew, which move? Did you say queen d3? Or what were you looking at, Andrew? We can actually <clears throat> fail for the same reason, I think. No, I was saying was a black just pawn grubbing? By taking the B2 bond. Sort of, but not, yeah, he's he's inducing him to do that, but it's kind of like, 
But there's just... nothing better. There's really nothing better. Maybe he could try and defend, like retreating his queen. I don't know if that does anything. It's just a very difficult position now. Probably that's his best attempt. I mean, his queen goes missing. She, he. Well, the thing is, he really wants. See again, that's Nakamura. He. That's his style. He's not gonna. He. That's the not thing. Against a really strong attacker, you shouldn't just be like, "Oh, he's a strong attacker. I need to play really solidly." No. If anything, if you can, if you can sack against them, they're probably not just gonna sit around. You know, they're they're, they're gonna like, you know they're not going to probably play the most accurate moves to try to, you know, cleanly finish with material up. So if you start sacking against them and playing actively, they're going to get uncomfortable, generally speaking, because they like to attack in lieu of defense. They often can't do both, you know? Now, I don't know about Nakamura, but obviously in this case, he did not defend very well. He was hoping for a counterattack, but just, he might have overlooked something. But I think it's just that Amon's uh, attack was overwhelming. I really like what he did there. It's really instructive game. C5, knight B5 and C5, and bishop H3. Well, first of all, the bishop takes that four stuff, and then bishop H3. So you see, he opened up the king side, but he just used it to his advantage. Everything he did, just like almost a perfect, you know, in terms of con con yeah, like know, everything, the conceptually, it's like perfect game. What's that? The, like the not taking the rook, I think was it. I bet Nakamura was expecting him to take it. Maybe. Right, right. Or at least he was yeah, that's hard to resist. Waiting him to take it positionally. Yeah. But he, but but uh, but Simatawi was too strong positionally to get to under to, to not understand that. Yeah, that's what he's hoping because he's a lower rated player. He figures, hey, I'm gonna. Well, back then Nakamura wasn't at twenty seven hundred. He's twenty six forty seven, but he still has more than two hundred points on him. So he's probably. You know, like, I'm just going to attack this guy and win. Well, I was like, no, I'm not giving in. But here's mm -hmm. the thing. The last thing I'm like, oh, well, you're talking about well, this way is to move. But again, he either has to retreat or he does this, still trying to take. It's like, oh, it seems favorable because white didn't get rook c1 in yet. But white has another way in. Really nice. It's overwhelming. Here. What is the overwhelming way that white builds the attack now? Oh, wait, this is what we spoke about. This is what we spoke about. Really beautiful finish. So I think so. What do you guys see? Oh. Uh, hmm. I'm off my game today, so I'm going to sit this one out. This is, well, this one, okay, it's not a check and it's not a capture because we're not going to take F5. That's our only capture really at the moment. So it's something else. Well, you talked about it, Nikki. I think you mentioned, you looked at this as a candidate move, it didn't work. Uh, now Bishop we're going H6 to set it up maybe. to make it work. What is it? Bishop H6, maybe. Bishop H6. It's always possible, but... Well, the thing is that there was that other line where the rook was in the game. That worked when that that worked in certain lines where the or it was either rook takes g7 or maybe bishop h6 first. But usually it was the rook sack. It's almost we, we want the bishop more than the rook in those lines almost. But either way, we're hitting those dark squares as you saw many queen h7 or queen g7 infiltration. Um, but what about something else? Let's deal with the queen. Obviously, we can't really push the d pawn. We'll take e6, but we could do something else to the queen. Can we play queen a3? Is that like crazy? Which move? Queen a3. I mean, sorry, rook a3. Yes. Rook a3, rook lift, setting up the mate. You see the mate now? Because remember, yeah. we talked about, oh, if only, because you should be looking at stuff like that, like hypothetically. Like, remember, we talked about the breaking breaking through here. And it's like, well, mm -hmm. it doesn't work yet. But what if we had one more ingredient, one more resource? Mm -hmm. Aha. That's it. That's game. I mean, where does she even go? She can't cover anything, right? She's got to go somewhere. She can't go here. Let's say she waits, whatever she does, somewhere over here. And what's the finish? That looks like it's, wait a second. No, it's a little bit different though. It's a little bit different because in the previous line, we had the rook here. So we thought, what if we had another rook here? The only difference is that, okay, I'm looking at the sack line, right? Right. The only difference is though that when you, okay, so you sack, when you check, if nothing else, you can maybe just check, go in first. But when you sack, they do have the bishop blocks line. You might even be able to take the pawn with the bishop and unleash that. You might have something like that. But if the rook takes, so you see a sack, so we say a sack, it looks dangerous, but in this case, it doesn't work, I think. And that's why we talked about when the, hypothetically, if we already had the rook here and the other rook got in, which which it wouldn't in time, unless it were like this rook, no, it wouldn't really be possible. But I wonder, this is very interesting. 
I what think if we don't we, sack. What if we just like you know? Yeah, yeah, rook h three. But if you can sack, then do it. Yeah, right? yeah, okay. But you almost have your threat. No, 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 it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. But there is, there is a g five possible. Hmm. Okay, I'll be right there. Okay, I've been I've been summoned. Okay, uh, yeah, we're. Well, well, why don't I pull up? Okay, why don't I pull up the other one real quick? Okay, well, how about this? I will uh, delegate for a moment, and then I'll come back to it. Why don't I? I, I have to go. I I'll have send to go. you. What's that? You have to go. Yeah, unfortunately, I have to go. So. Um, okay. Well, it'll be recorded. So. Okay. Awesome. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Nikki. Great. You, know, you right. did a great Thank job. You. you saw a lot of stuff. We were just mm -hmm. doing cross elimination, but you saw a lot of stuff. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you as always. Bye, guys. Bye, Bye John. Bye, yeah. Andrew. Okay. Hey, okay. you too. Later. Thank you. So if you guys want, yeah, I'm needed for a moment, but if you guys want here, I'm going to give you the, um, the link or something. And if you want to just make some, a few moves, who wants to do it? Just start to just check out the opening there. Cause we're really going to look at the, the brilliancy. I really want you guys to focus on the brilliant Bishop E3 move. So who wants to briefly look at that? You can scare the screen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me come get you. Good man. Who, who wants to do it? Who can share a screen on it? You choose. <laughs> Andrew, you have a set? Uh, no, not really. Okay, John, is it easy for you to share a screen from there? Okay, so you need me to share a screen? Yeah, what I'm gonna do, yeah. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send you the link real quick. Mm -hmm. And then, and then yeah, if you could just start looking at it and share a screen here, I mean. I'll be right there. Hold on. Okay, ready? Get invited. All right, we're gonna come get it right now. Okay, so this is the game. Yeah, this is the other game, and he has white as well in this game. So this is the one versus Simon Crouch, I think it is. Um, in the British champion, he came and played in the UK championship. Okay, so this is. I think if I send you this link, actually, hold on. If I send you this link. Yeah, it'll have it on the link. Okay, so I'm gonna send it to you right now. And then John, I'm gonna switch the screen. I'm gonna stop the screen share and I am going to uh, pass it on to, or I will enable it. So do you, you know how to share screen from there? Okay, so, so I opened the link and now Share screen. Let's see. I don't see it. This, you don't under the Zoom. Uh, okay, so I hit. Oh, share screen. So I do share screen. Okay, I don't. Oh, is this it? Let me see. I don't know if this you is. You could it. do whole screen, or you could do portion of. You could do like browser. Do you see it there? Is this it? Yeah, yeah it's coming up. And now you have the link. Um, wait a second, it's not, okay. So yeah, there you go on the right tab, on the top right, you see the lead chest button, a lead chest tab on the top right next to that. Top right. So top right, yeah. top right tab. You see how it says the question mark as the night, the white knight, the question mark. The size window, let's see. I know you're in a rush here. Trying to figure no, it out. Okay. She, she's okay for a minute. I'll, I'll, I'll get her in a minute. Um, okay, do you see, are you on the browser right now where it says Zoom really big? It says Zoom really big, yeah. Hey, go, go up to the top. To the top, the yeah. Tab, the tab is up there. Yeah, to the left of the X. Go to the left of the X. Keep going left to the tabs that has the white knight. Oh, click the yeah, knight. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Click on that one. Yeah. Fisher. Yeah, there you go. So, um, yeah, that's fine. And then, and then you can just see the opening uh, from there. Why you can start the opening, and why don't you guys just kind of you can do the opening book if you want, but just kind of press arrow forward for a little bit, and you guys can just try to figure out how he approaches the opening. Oh, but okay. he started. He started <laughs> okay, D four. And more so, he's playing on the queen side for a while. So see how he builds the attack. Sorry. It's okay. a D for opening. Yeah, he's going for D four. 
in the previous game. Oh, he also played D4. You know what he said when he was becoming, uh, what he wrote, is, uh, I think in an interview, interview that I read, um, when he was preparing for his GM norm, he played quieter systems a little bit. Maybe he's more of an attacking player, as we saw against Nakamura. But he played slightly quieter systems because that's what he prepared for to handle some really strong opposition. What he determined would be the best, would clearly worked out for him is those dominant performances. But uh, but the long games were not really conducive to, you know, rest and everything. It didn't allow him to, you know, be where he wanted to be. But obviously he still scored really well. But definitely it was grueling. The long, basically D4. D4 games are less likely to, to lead to a quick knockout, I'd say that. But they're great. I mean, you're playing for, uh, you know, an enduring advantage, squeeze your opponent, get more center, outplay them slowly. Like, it's t- more typical. But there are obviously attacking lines like F3 and E4 or something. So he's going more for the queen side, but he's just going to grind him down, build his advantage. So take a look at how he starts. I'll be right there. You guys can just discuss as you're going. Okay, d4, and then this is, uh, what is this, knight f6. So I guess it's a king's Indian. Yeah, I'm not really familiar with the openings yet. Uh, I think the point of the knight is to prevent uh, d5. Okay, c4 is pretty uh, aggressive. That's like a, looks like a queen's gambit, I guess. So pin the knight. Yeah. Open up the lines for the bishop and the queen. So that helps support uh, the pawn on c4, I guess. And then that blocks a bishop. Okay, I'm not sure. I guess maybe that supports uh, d4. Attack on the knight. Okay. okay. So the knights protect each other. There's that too. Yeah. This is protection. I noticed that the uh, black opened the d6. And I'm guessing that's for him to uh, been kettle, but he hasn't done anything yet. Okay, so he's attacking the knight. He's probably where he takes out his uh, black bishop. Okay. Hmm, okay, protect the knight. But the knight can still get kicked with like uh, F3 or something. Yeah. Okay, so steady attacks the uh, the bishop. Let's see. Hmm, let's see. So I'm just gonna move back. Move. Have, let's see. The queen moved away already, so uh <clears throat> otherwise I thought they could do like something like queen um h4 and then knight to like f2 and try to fork, but the queen moved away already, so that doesn't work. Right. Ah, attacks. Okay. Okay, so instead of pinning the knight, just takes it. Okay. Yeah. Takes it with the knight. Take back. Don't take back. No. Now it's a fian keto. Now he does. Okay. All right. What do you think he's going to do next? Let me see. He's probably going to maybe. Let's see. So white is attacking the knight twice. And he has protection, protection. I'm thinking maybe it's uh, just take Yeah, it. white could just trade the knight and then uh pick up the pawn. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Hmm.
Okay, the thing kind of bishop saves the day. Yeah. Nope, just move. So you can either move the queen or block with the bishop. Okay, just move the queen. That's fine. I wonder if you want to try to trap the bishop in the queen part. Let's see. No, castles. Oh, castles, okay. Hmm, I was about to ask if the queen has a long diagonal, actually. I'm just looking for a minute. Yeah, we oh, need to figure out the light square bishop. Yeah. What would I do? Mm, let's see. Yeah, these bishops need to get developed. I'm thinking yeah, light square bishop is a problem. It's going to take two minutes to get him out. So maybe like bishop uh, e2 and then out to like. Uh... All right, I'm back. So you guys are seeing, uh, what are you seeing so far? Yeah, you want to go. What do you think so far? What, what did I miss in general? Uh, David, you want to go back to the beginning and maybe you can. Uh... Just kind of blitz through it real quick. And then as I, well, as I go through it, just tell me. Um... Yeah. Okay. Let's see this one. Yeah, I'll just switch the share over. Okay. And just kind of as I blitz through it uh, so far, you got to play what move ten or so. <clears throat> look, uh, yeah. Let me know if if uh, I missed anything. Or see what other what other. We were just, we were just kind of we were just kind of thinking of what what uh, moves they were going to make and pretty much got them all wrong. <laughs> oh, okay. You were anticipating. All right. Like guess the move. Oh, that's always fun. Well, some of it's like subtle. They do the they do the right move, but later, like the fianchetto. Oh, okay. So you got you got the main ideas though. <clears throat> yeah, John called it. He was like, "Oh yeah, fianchetto the bishop." But happened like you know three moves later. So we're like, okay. Let's that's see. Kind of subtle. This is an interesting line where the idea is that he wants to make the bishop take, but he doesn't double his pawns. So and this is where he's playing cr crouch, C R U C H. So he <clears throat> wants to take back uh, like this, right? And the idea is like, you don't want to mess up your pawn structure, which Black is pretty happy with, like the famous Fischer Spassky round five and famous Ryshevsky game and all that. So Fischer went, you know, he doubles the pawns, goes d6 and c5 and e5 and all, locks it up, favors the knights over the bishops. So this way he just keeps a nice fluid structure and you're going to see he's going to play on the queen side a lot. So he's still not letting him double the pawns. He'll have to, you know, endure a couple, maybe like one trade, but then Crouch just goes f5 to anchor the knight like a Dutch. So actually, interestingly enough, he trades bishops. Now, interest, and also interestingly, in the Capablanca Tartakower game, the knight ends up trading a famous Tart Capablanca game. The knight trades off and the bishop takes the knight on f3 and liquidates everything. So he's like, nope, in this case, I'm going to keep my knight, which was a smart idea, and I'm going to defend with the bishop. Okay, so it gets traded off, but at least he keeps his bishop too. So, so he's keeping something, having pressure on the diagonal. But in that Capablanca game, Tartakower takes on f3. He's like, why are you giving up that bishop? So you see at least black is fighting for light squares. And naturally, white has some control over dark squares. All right, so we're seeing that so far. Hold on, Mike. let me finish this last one. A little bit. F3, I'll be able to ship back. So by going f3, yeah, I mean, he's just, he's blunting the bishop and otherwise, unless you want to, there are some lines where you sack this and like go rich you want, but he doesn't want to, no, excuse me. There's not too much firepower here to justify that. Excuse me. Okay, in a little bit, we'd be patient. I'll get a few little bit. Okay, I'll, I'll give, okay, I'll give you guys a moment to think on the other thing. Okay, I'll be right there. Okay, I'll be right there. I'll give you guys a little look at it real quick. <laughs> yeah, castles. D6. See, this is where, okay, okay, hold on. Hold on, there. Okay, expands on the queen side. Nice C6. Now, this is a move I didn't quite, didn't quite understand. Um, 
No, I think I understand now. Because he wants, so he's playing for E4, right? I, I guess it's the, well, I mean, it's a loose bishop. So if nothing else, it's prophylactic, right? But imagine if he does play E4, it takes takes, you, you know, that way the bishop is not going to be hanging. Instead, the queen's going to be hanging, right? And the other thing is, of course, you know, you can develop probably on the diagonal. It looks nice because we are the only ones with a dark squared bishop. We have the uncontested bishop, as we've looked at a lot. And so it makes sense to attack on the diagonal with it, right, with the queen. And we have the rooks doubling. So we're really going to try and use our bishop pair. My coach in high school, a Kobe and a Berugian, a Kobe, and we actually do this a lot. He'd play the queen c2 line against the Nimzo. He has another interesting line against the queen. Yeah, does the queen have a long bishop diagonal in this case? What's that? Does the queen have a long diagonal? Yeah, we'd hope so. Well, I mean, it's just comfortable. You know, they have a little space advantage. We've blunted their bishop. This knight's not going anywhere yet. We might want to play e5. We come in, we have bishop b2. We can double our rooks. So lots of good, and white can choose where to play. Maybe b5 later, maybe, usually c5. C5, that's what he does, actually. So let's go, I want to, I'll give you guys a moment to think here. I'll give you a key moment. It's just expanding, and I'm just gonna keep it. It's like, look, as long as I don't get mated on the king side, I'm like, I'm just gonna expand on the queen side, the queen side attack, right? Swings over, why not? He just shuts him down, rook g2, he's, he's okay with the attack. Secures everything. If he goes h3, it shuts down his attack, just go back, which is what he does. H5, H5, keeps going on the queen side to invade. B5. And six and ten. Now, this is kind of cool. Well, why don't you guys take a brief look at this? Because this is complicated. Well, I mean, naturally, um, so white's trying to shut things down, although he's not really succeeding. <laughs> so black doesn't even take. He probably could take if he wanted to. No, no, no. There's actually an idea. There's actually an idea, and that feeds into the whole thing here as to why he went there. Well, first of all, okay, let's see. So yeah, well, you guys can ask yourself. Obviously, a6 is very natural. He's given up the, the opportunity for white to open the rook against a7, so he shuts it down. But he figures, hey, let's let's go after the bishop, gain some space. Maybe he could go rook a5 later. Hey, who knows? You get a little a lateral attack going on. It might actually lead to the queen if f4 is played. Who knows? But a lot of prospects. Now, why does he? Well, first of all, he does, Andrew, open up the queen. He's not mating him yet, but it's pressure. Why not? Hey, mate, no, we're threatening to take now. We're literally threatening to take h4. Oh, no, the queen will take, but still, but still, oops, but still, it's a prospect. You might do it. You may have to deal with a check, but there's that. Okay, coming, coming. So I want you guys to think about why did he play d5, okay? Like, he's hanging all this stuff, right? Everything's hanging. But think about what's going to happen if the pawn takes. Be right there. Hmm, so it's a little bit early for the queen to go to g7. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, that's stuff looking at g7, right? There's the queen, the dark square bishop, the rook. Okay, so why did he move that pawn to d5? Oh, can the pawn just take on e6 and then kick that rook away? All right, so it's okay. black. Okay. So what is going on? Yeah, d5. Why did white do this? Because, well, they're hanging in the d. They're, they're, Hanging this pawn, which he takes. He yeah. does take, Crouch takes, but, well, first of all, if you think about the what Black wants in some cases, Black wants to shut down the diagonal. With e, Black would love to play e5 and like d5, and just shut it down, have mobile pawns, and the queen, the queen can't do anything, right? She's blocked by the pawn. So first of all, if the bishop takes, now there could be a bypass going on. We have to look at that too. But he did take. But yeah, when, but when he takes, See how the, the they can't block the queen anymore. So you get that pressure. And again, don't forget that the 
keep in mind that this could open up. And even if check, you can move your king. You could actually move your king to g1 if you want to. It's stuff like that. It's interesting. It looks a little weird, but hey, he opened up his king last time and it worked. He lost it. He gave up his g-pawn for the f-pawn. Or remember the d-pawn that became the e-pawn that became an f-pawn. Yeah, so g7 is the focal point then, right? G7 is the focal point, precisely. The bishop, the queen, and the rook. In, there in the class, we looked at that, right? Three attackers. We would love to either mate there or crash. Well, we would like to double our rooks and really crash through. Uh, he does some stuff there, too. Okay. But, uh, yeah, so we have this, and then he takes this way. So, basically, we throw away the d-pawn and take this one. What, did you guys have any other thoughts about this before I... Uh, if he didn't take, could uh, we'd also take on e6? There's a threat on e6, it looks like, yeah. And then kick that rook away. I mean, if the rook wasn't there, then the queen could just go to e7. Oh, precisely. Right, e7 right away, right? Yeah, he ends up getting some stuff in there. Precisely, you take this and come in here. So he kind of has to take. Oh, there is the bypass. I, I wonder about the bypass line. I think, you know what? Hmm. That's more annoying for white to handle. Well, here's another thing that I was going to mention. Um, The other thing is if you take this right away, maybe the knight gets access to d5. Pretty annoying, right? Maybe. That's at least one pro. That's probably why. Well, think about it like right here. I mean, it's uncomfortable for black, but he really doesn't want to see the rook come. Maybe you should have let that happen, but it's very uncomfortable. And if the rook comes in, the bishop moves, you take it. C7 again, we get our rook to C7. So you see some similarities in both games, interestingly, from the d4 openings. And because in both cases, black played f5. But in the first case, d5 was played in response. The bishop's on g2, but you still see d5 played. So we get kind of a similar structure in some ways um, with the c file opening and stuff. So anyway, he takes, he takes. So we trade one off, but keep in mind, we do sh currently shut down the bishop uh, and we block the knight from coming in, right? It's a very messy situation. Oh, and the c pawn's hanging. And you got to watch out for the a pawn in some cases with the pass pawn. So it seems to favor white as long as he doesn't get crushed. But keep in mind that bishop and queen are finally open, which is very strong. So he's like, oh, I'm afraid of that rook. So he's, I'm going to shut that thing down. But that pawn doesn't really do anything. And then he tries for f4. So interesting, it's like, oh, you could always take again and come out with the rook again. But now he takes the other way. I see him want to open his king up. So he takes this one. And then the knight comes in. Now it's like, oh, it's kind of messy. He's, he's aiming in here. He might push the pawn. So. I mean, Black is getting a fair share of counter, but that's for sure. But he just understands these positions. He's willing to roll with the punches. Very tactical. He rolls with the punches. Queen d2, d4, g4. Look at him. He's so, he's so, he's so aggressive. Oh, this is really cool. Okay, Jake, I'm doing the class. Cool, cool. Let me finish the class first, and we'll look at more. Okay, look, this is super cool. So, look at that. This is so interesting, right? That barely ever happens. So, and I, I well, this is hanging. Um, if the yeah, the pawn can't push, you take so he has to go, she has to go back, and then the bishop just takes the pawn. That's just crazy, right? Like, hmm. I don't know what to compare that to. It's like, well, it's a, complicated, yeah, but to compare, like, what is going on here, right? It's interesting because these pawns guard these pawns. See, so look at how many squares the pawns control. It's like the ultimate example of doubled, like two pairs of doubled pawns, a pair of, yeah, two sets of doubled pawns. But everything, but I mean, if you think about it, yeah, they're doubled, but like they're both. Is there a name for this, this pawn box? I don't know. What's a good name for that? Like a pawn. Pawn box. <laughs> pawn box. Pawn box thing. Like a Rubik's cube sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. So queen e6. Rook h1, why not? It's a beautiful position all of a sudden. I, I don't know. I, I have a feeling this has got to favor white. I mean, he's got the stuff on the queen side. You can always take this. Should be very strong in an end game, if nothing else. You've got the bishop pair again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five. So we have two pawns for the exchange, right? A bishop for a rook. Our bishops are super strong. Target on g7 focal point. Really strong pawns. Therefore, king is pretty safe. Rook's about to take that pawn, giving him three pawns for the exchange. And there's a little trick going on. Queen wants to come in, right? So let's say they take this with check. And if the king takes, you're gonna take a three and game over. And if the if the queen takes, sorry, if the queen takes back, uh-oh, queen takes bishop check and gets both bishops for the rook and he merges a bishop up. So you probably don't want that. He tucks his bishop back. But now, oh, this is with a brilliancy is brewing up. 
that bishop can do some things. It can be Ralph, as you guys saw the position, but we have to figure out um, how it works. So queen takes b5, takes back. Okay, so we still have that. We still have the, we had, we had two extra pawns, right? Six for four, for what it's worth. Beautiful cube of like this, this uh, square of pawns. And then we have f five coming. So he's using this pawn. And that's what I was talking about. You know, he's just fearless, keeps throwing things, but he's completely restricted his opponent, really. What is black to do here? R double rooks. That's about it, but it didn't work. That's pretty much it, double rooks. But he wants to play f6 now. f6 is a breakthrough idea. You'll see. Bishop goes here. Well, now he's trying to mate him here. That's a little unpleasant. So he simply brings his rook back. No problem. That's about all he gets out of that. But um, but why can't the pawn take? How strong is this for white? Actually, a little bit tricky. He might even have it. I wonder if he has a bishop. No, you already had two. How about how about bishop? So the pawn take can do like queen to uh h6 then. That's what that's that's what I was looking at. There's a problem, I think. Oh, Hank's a bishop. Yeah, and I think he, he keeps checking favorably. If you could run out of checks, that would probably be good. But you don't. You can't go here because the queen's here to go here. Yeah. And then the rook's coming in. So that's good. That's getting made in. Some kind of appetite. Okay, we'll get you the different kind. So what I'm wondering is, okay, so if he were to take, you know, if nothing else, you just keep throwing stuff at him. But I wonder whether, wait, hold on. You could, what else do we have here? I think you, you can invade with her. I mean, his king is so exposed. You have lots of ways in. And we're, we're trying to get initially three in soon. The computer said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, right, that's what I was going to mention as well. I was looking at the G5, which is strong. No, no, it's more. Yeah, right, this, this move, I'm going to bring it. Okay, shh. Right, that's, that's the one, right. Because you threatened me. Okay, okay, I heard you, hold on. Okay, he's very persistent, right? This is coming now. So he doesn't have a chance. Okay, okay. I'm coming. We're gonna go. We're gonna go. We're gonna see more. Okay. Sorry, guys. Um. So f6. So that's the idea. Yeah. Right. The idea is just uh, either g5 or simply sack the bishop. That's even strong. So he sees that. He goes bishop b5. Pitch one. C5. Just tucks the bishop back. Now he's taking here. He's currently hanging the bishop. So you always have to be super tactical. He's a super tactical player. So now you have to ask yourself, we have to, now you have to ask yourself, okay, what if he takes this one? Now. Right, now what? <laughs> now what, baby? I have to go. So no, try to find so try to find the finish if this happens. I'll be right there. Yeah, I don't know why he's calling her baby. She's not a baby anymore, but okay. Um <laughs> but um, okay. So this doesn't work. Whether it's the queen or the pawn, why does this fail? I'll be right there. Hmm. Can you just play rook to h8? Rook h8, and then the queen just takes uh, the pawn. Hmm, yeah, I think g7 is hanging. Maybe. And then the queen could go to uh, h6. Yeah, then what? Oh, h6. Yeah, would that work? So you said the rook goes to h8. That's check, right? Yeah. 
And yes, then captured by the pawn. So the queen captures the pawn. Uh, G7, and then our queen, white queen, goes to H7. That would be mate. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Yeah, that would be mate, right? Let's see, rook H8, then the king has to take on G7. Yep. And then queen goes to a h7. Check. Mate. It seems too easy, huh? <laughs> wait, the queen has the queen get h7. Oh, wait, the queen can escape by going to um, f6. What are, you, what are you guys looking at? Which move? Uh, so rook to h8. Rook H8. Yeah, yeah, go for your check. Go for the check. It's the check protected by the pawn. And then so I think the king has to take on G7. Stop, Jacob, stop. Sorry, what's that? <clears throat> king takes on G7. OK, and then? Queen goes H7. Yeah. You go take some. Go take some. Okay, after king after king takes then it's a very bad time right now. So after king takes then, I think we'll finish. It's almost done. King takes g seven and then where? Oh wait, queen goes to eight. Queen to h six. Yeah, yeah, that's a mate. You guys found it. Yeah. So that's so everything is like very forcing. There's really nothing to do. Just like we saw with the f six line, I think. Yeah, not g five. Just just bishop takes f six, and that's really it. And then you're you're threatening mate, and again, if you take, I think it's just uh, simply the check, and that doesn't, that shouldn't. I think something like this, that should end not end, not end well. But okay, go take some. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. You want some more? Okay. Okay. The final move. Hold on. The final one. No, this is harder to see. Though this one's harder. Check. So if he doesn't take, he goes here. Hmm. Now this is the brilliant move. I'm gonna get a fever. This is the brilliant move. So just given how, again, like he, he's almost getting mated. He couldn't take here because the, because the king would have to take and he'd mate. So well, the, well the, either way, no, either way the king got f7, but it just doesn't work. Now in this line, the line was, uh, no, in this position, if he had taken immediately, it would be, an, it's instant make zism king f7. But in this position, he does have king f7. It's not enough, though, because we have the brilliant finish. You guys may remember the move, because I had the puzzle that uh, featured the queen to f4. So you found the idea. You need queen. If you have queen f4, well, there's a mate right there. So he's so contained. But you can't go queen f4, not really, because he takes, and it kind of kills the attack, right? One, two. Let's see what we have right now. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Well, for example, takes, you take back. Oh yeah, the queen is still there. Let's see. Yeah, it's, well, what's going <clears throat> on? If you do check, takes, takes. It's white to move, but you can't really queen or anything. This is hanging, so let's say, uh, no, sorry, it's black to move, so they would just take the bishop. Yeah, it's bad. You just trade the queen then yeah, use the attack. Over. Yeah, it's just over. They just have a rook and they should be fine. So you got to use, you got to make use of this rook. Uh, it's a fleeting moment. So we want queen f4. That's the brilliant idea to, to make. So you have your idea. Now, this is the kind of thing where like you won't randomly find it. You know, like it's not a force move. Like, oh, let me look at every forcing move. It's, well, you have, first you have, remember, first we have capture checks and regular checks. Then we have captures and then we have threats. So this one is a threat. And it, it makes everything work, and it's just done. And then he resigns. So try. I think he wow. resigns. What no, he plays that? on the. No, he tries one. He tries one more. One last hurrah, but it fails. Uh, what are you seeing, John? I'm seeing. Um, so the bishop goes to b3. Brilliant. That's the move. Why? But why does that work? No, because you now. Uh, so you have your fork. So if the, the queen, pin, the, pin, if the right. queen captures. The bishop, 
Now yeah, you can move your queen. Now you yeah. get your forced mate, mating too. Yeah. So the queen can't capture the bishop. But it's also, it's even more brilliant. One, this idea to make him there. But secondly, so you have this brilliant attack in general, just kind of threw everything. I kept going, going. It all worked. He made sure it all worked. And then rookie two check. Queen takes e2. But I want you to see this moment. This fails. It's his last, it's like a spike. It's like a series of spike checks, basically. You have to be careful though. So final thing, I think it needs one more thing. Final thing, why is this winning? How do you make sure? Because it looks kind of scary. It's like, oh, you take and he takes back and he, you know, he's got your queen. You get their queen, they get your queen, but it's not that simple. Because what are you trying to do after after the trade? What can you do? Think about that for a moment. I'll be right there. Let's see. You can use the queen, take the rook. If it takes back, you can uh, push the pawn, queen it. You can get your queen on g8. So the other rook is actually pinned on uh, e8, right? Wait a minute. What, so right now he's in check. So what do we do? Uh, I think you take with the queen. So queen takes on e2. Okay. And then. And then this queen can now attack, uh, go to e2 also. Still check. Yeah, queen e2 check. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Then you gotta move the. Wait, actually, no. The queen's pinned, right? Oh, yeah. So yeah. I have to take with the rook. Right. But the rook is pinned too because it's guarding um, g8, preventing promotion. Oh man, that's tricky. So we capture e2. Okay, so we capture e2. Yeah, so rook takes back on e2 then. Then promote on uh, g8. Hmm. Wait, okay. So you're saying you take, they take with check. Yeah. Good thing is we know the queen's still pinned, so she can't do anything. Yeah. So when they take back, then what do we do? We got to deal with the check. Where do we go? One move. There's only one move that works. Makes the whole thing work. Is that, is that um, F1? No. Not F1. Well, no, that would that might get, you might get in trouble there because the queen will slash bishop. Because let's say you take the queen, this bishop still takes back. It's more complicated. It's complicated. So we don't need that. What do we do after rook takes e2? Mm. Is it g1? Yes. You just go to g1. Game over. There's nothing left. Nothing more to do. Because you're going to queen. And, and you're, well, yeah, I'm pretty sure you're going to mate. But uh, interestingly enough, if you really, if you had nothing better, you get a skewer and you can pick up the queen. But I'm pretty sure we'll get, <laughs> there's got to be a mate here. <clears throat> One, yeah. Oh, no. that's tricky. You could be cheeky you're, and get a bishop yeah. instead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. And then they're going to take your bishop. We'll get the queen. But uh, we could, we can't go here. That's, that's almost mate, but then the bishop takes. We can probably... We have two options. Well, we can go here. That seems to do the trick. We can probably lure him back also. Uh, I don't want to let him there. I like the fact that he's cut off. How about this one? You know, the queen has to interpose, right? That that can't end, that cannot end well. It's like what, mate and two? No, it's still not mate and two, I think. Still a little trick. They got a little bit of work to do, you know. Gonna take a couple more moves, maybe. We can do this. Same with, they can't block anymore, so you can make them like that if you want. Uh, you can chase them this way, and then if they weren't here, you made them here. Or the rook would have to block and give them the rook for it, but whatever. <laughs> no, this is this is mating too, see? Because they have to, see, otherwise they would, they would be able to come back, right? Like if you do it right away, they can come back and you still have a little bit of work to do. But yeah, we mate in two, see? That's easy, easy enough. So uh, easiest way, as long as it mates. So yeah, it's a beautiful attack. You know, I just, I love, but it, but you see, there's always a precursor. You know, it's not just like, you don't just get this position. You don't just get to play f5, f6 and win, 
all right, that's cool. It's like, but no, that's not his attack. That that's the escalation and the conclusion of his attack. But then he had to find bishop b3 and he had to find, you know, the perfect move order allowing the rook check. I mean, it's brilliant. But like, where does the attack begin? Probably a while ago. Like, you have all these complications with b5. See, this is, it was unclear, right? It's unclear here. Very murky position. So he has to handle all this stuff. The knight's coming in, the pawn's coming in. He, and then he creates this full cool square. And then things start to escalate from here. He starts building, building, building. Now he's got a lot of, he gives it the exchange, lots of compensation for it. I just yes, love pawn box pawn. thing. I love that box. What's that? The pawn box. That's something unique. You barely ever see that. I mean, your opponent has to help you create that, right? You can't just like move there like that because you want to. Yeah, I mean, well, first he threw the pawn at him because he's trying to attack, trying to like sort of, well, he wanted to gain access to F5. It was a clearance. He's trying to, you know, stifle his pawns, double him up, you know, kind of work around him. Not a huge deal. Maybe try to make him take this way with a queen check or something. Doesn't matter. But now G4 then begins and then takes takes. Help me. And then you have that. But yeah, he did help, but he wanted to because he he felt that he could gain he felt like he gained he felt that he gained something in both cases. Okay. And then yeah, and then it just and then it quickly it was conclu quickly concluded, but he needed f five. But see, this is probably winning. I would again some stockfish confuse is today. I'm not stockfish is not always agreeing with, with me, but I'm pretty sure he's winning. Yeah, I mean pretty decisive plus two. I'd say a little yeah, this pawn box is like an unbreakable done. fortress. Not done yet, but huge advantage. What's that? The pawn box is like an unbreakable fortress. Yeah. Um, like as black, you get you past this thing. Like walk your king around, but he just can't get to you. What's that? As black, how you break through that thing? It's pretty hard. Well, the only hope is like rookie two. Yeah, he you gotta go around. Two, like he did. That's his only way. Or the diagonal. Like there, like there's lines where the bishop is under threat by the queen. So like you can't quite come out yet in certain lines. There's stuff like that. A little bit feeble, but you just have to make sure everything, just keep everything tight. But I'm sure that, look at this, he's plus two, as he should play rook. Yeah, he should double his rooks. Why are you taking the b pawn? So, yeah. But then, you know, oh, that's interesting. Of course, the computer always finds something. It says, no, you have to play g5, not f5. But it's a human game. It's imperfect. Um, so anyway, it's hard to know, like, why in the moment you should do g5 instead of f5. But it's saying, like, oh, it wants to maybe anchor that there. Oh, it wants to trade down and just have a really nice exchange down situation. And it says he's doing better, but then it wouldn't have been glorious, right? That's the human move. It says why it's a tad better, but that's the human move and it's glorious. But I imagine F6 is very strong. Nope, it finds something else. It says the black is fine. But again, I mean, it's, it's just practically speaking though, it's very hard to handle this kind of thing. But where does it say that white's where does it say that it turns into a win? This move. So this was the blunder. I mean, it's probably, it's move 40. So it's probably, the move, like, he's probably just hitting the time control and blunder. But still, it's a hard position. Saying you can actually take this. And there's a check. You can't take as the mate. Rook blocks. Spreading mate. Rook check. There's that idea again. What is going on? That he has to block this. This is insane. What? It's a computer line. Check, check. Oh, then you have to go for a draw. Oh, wow. That's pretty hard to calculate all that, especially if you're on move 40. But uh, no, now he'd be on move 41 for white. But <laughs> yeah, that's pretty crazy, even then. So, um, but yeah, anyway, he did the human move. And then after this move, so he takes B4, he's just going to overcatch A. And if you're here, you know, you... and then the queen's coming in and you mate them. So, yeah, that's really nice, though. But it's important when you study these positions, you have to know how he escalates. Hold on. You have to know how he escalates his attack. Well, in this case, the four pawns, but there was a lot more than that. And then, boom, the final blows. Sack the queen. Well, you kind of have to anyway, nothing you do, but essentially sacks it by allowing. So bishop b3 hits the queen, hangs the bishop, and allows rookie two. But 
I mean, in this case, the idea is very clear. He wants the queen. Now, if the rook were to go back, let's see, takes, 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 and we're not up any pieces, but we're up pawns. So he's trying to, let's see. You can't go here. I think, I think does the bishop go over? Oh, that's nice. And then, yeah, he's going to queen. That's pretty cool. So the rook goes behind it, and then the bishop supports it. And then you, and then your pawns, your pawns uh, just, your pawns are decisive. That decides. So pretty cool game, huh? It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I don't know which one I prefer. Which one do you guys like better, the first one or the second one? This was kind of more brilliant in a way. I don't know. This was like <clears throat> the narrative was. I don't know. They're both messy, like very complicated games. Um, the Nakamura game. Well, he's playing Nakamura is a stronger opponent, though. So, the, I mean, I don't know. I thought this was pretty much like, you know, from a human perspective, about as perfect as you can get them. I really liked the idea of how he boldly took on f4, he plays a4, and then he does a brilliant. I mean, both involve brilliant sacrifices, too. I guess at this point, this one's clearer, though. The bishop b3 one is just out of this world. That's on another level. And that's the kind of thing, like, you know, it's not just about being like, you can't just be like, oh, he's more brilliant in one game than the other. It's just he had the opportunity to play Bishop B3 and one, and he had the opportunity to play Rook takes G7 in this one. So, yeah, but really, really brilliant guy. Amazing games to learn from. But it's really an interesting style. Keeps pressing, is not afraid to go into complications and handles them extremely well. Really wonderful technique. So, when this guy was on his game, you just win, 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 you know? So, yeah, uh, yeah just check out some more of his games on your own. What's that? The pawn box is memorable. Sorry, I can hear you now. What's that? The pawn box is memorable. Yes, it is. Exactly. That's going to be seared in your memory, like that image of the pawn box. And it, no, it happens sometimes. Like, for example, let's say you go H takes G6. Bishop takes G6, F, H takes G6. Then you have like a knight on F6. And they take a knight on F6 and the E pawn takes. So basically your pawns just both take toward, well, one toward, one away from the center. And they just... They just stack up on top of each on top of your G and F bond, something like that's when I've seen it before. I think I've had it like once or twice. Um, it is memorable though. And then you can, it's kind of like even just double G pawns, like in the Fisher spat in the Spassky Fisher game round five that I'm talking about. Fisher has double G pawns, so he's able to actually push the first one forward and allow the, the rear pawn to be his defender. So it's kind of like there, like he can play, he played F5, F6, but it, it didn't hurt his king's position, or as the computer recommend G5 or whatever. Didn't hurt his king at all. So good stuff. You guys have any uh, final thoughts about it? Well, now I'm gonna look him up and uh, look at the other games. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. Aman, Simat. We have to make sure we got the pronunciation. Yeah, if you could join sometime, that'd be awesome. What's that? If you could join sometime, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I was thinking about that because I was like, well, maybe we could try to ask him. Uh, because I, mean, I know Nikki said she's Facebook friends Nikki's with him. I know Facebook, what that means. So hey, who knows? Maybe he'd come by and he could tell us in his own. That would be awesome. What's that, Andrew? Yeah, Nikki's Facebook friends with him. I don't know what that means. She can like poke him or whatever. Oh, do they even have folks anymore? Is that a thing? Uh, I don't know. I haven't used Facebook in a long time. They used to have well, that. Yeah, she can message him though. Yeah, she, that's right. She could direct him, DM him. So if she DMs him, or I'll see if he's on Twitter or something. But yeah, she's already connected to him on Facebook. So you know, just send him a message and see if he wants to do it whatever but that would be cool because then he can uh show show us whatever game he wants and um yeah if he's up for it let's find out um it was your best game yeah anything what's that yeah, something like hey show us your best game the one you thought was your best game you know anything yeah yeah or uh, uh or he can maybe he can play with us or something i mean i'm getting ahead of myself but just an invitation see if he was that'd be fun i mean really any player we discussed but i think or that'd be fun to have like Judith Pogar or something like that. Like, but the thing is, this is not a huge class. I don't know. Maybe if it's like, uh, you know, like, yeah, whatever. But you never know. You never know. Um, worth asking. Because, uh, but I, I think, uh, yeah, he's he's um, he's a gem. You know, yeah. For some, uh, a hidden gem because they maybe didn't know about him. Like we we're talking about how uh, chess in sub-Saharan Africa is not really like talked about that much necessarily, or not getting the uh, attention it deserves. I mean, as uh, Daim Shabazz was talking about not getting, you know, the resources it deserves and uh, versus these uh, well-funded teams in Europe and the U.S. and so forth. So definitely, I know, I'm not sure about how, how much 
the Kasparov Chess Foundation does. There's chess in slums uh, in Nigeria. Uh, Tunde, a really, really great guy. He does a lot of work in, with chess and slums, which, which at least gets people into chess. And I and actually gave a computer to uh, Daniel, our student Daniel comes to NEMS uh, in Northern Nigeria. So he got a computer for him, which is really cool. So, and Daniel's already really good. It's just a matter of whether he has time and you know, he's busy with work, start his own business. But um, yeah, yeah, I think it's uh, really a lot of potential and it's just a matter of, you know, I think like FIDE talks about it, that they'll support Sub-Saharan Africa. It's just a matter of they put the money where the mouth is. And, uh, but yeah, as for the Kasparov Chess Foundation, I know they do some work in Africa. Um, I'm, I, I think uh, Horn of Africa and stuff. So I'm, uh, I'm not sure how much, but that would be interesting to find out too. But definitely, uh, definitely important stuff. Hopefully people pursue that. So uh, yeah, nice job, guys. I'll post this one and uh, awesome contributions. I'll see you guys next week. Cool. Thanks, David. Thank you, Absolutely. David. See you, Andrew. Thanks, see you Have a great weekend. See you guys next time. See you, Bye. Andrew.